from PRX. Friends beyond binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for a podcaster who's uh, here to uh, like uh, be here uh, to keep you company, take your mind off of stuff, to be your friend in the deep dark night, your boar bud. If you're new, you never listened to the show before. Welcome. This is a very different podcast. It's a podcast that, that keeps you company so you could fall asleep. Uh, that's like your friend in the deep, dark night. I'm here to be your boar bud. And I'll explain more in a little bit. But uh, yeah, the, this, this podcast does take a few tries to get used to because it, it, it's very different. So give it a few tries to see how it goes. I'm only here to help what I got coming up. We got support so you can listen for free if you want uh, to the ad supported feed. Uh, then we have a long meandering intro and that's separate from the support and the intro is like 15, 20 minutes long. It's really like fr- friendly chit chat from a goofball. Uh, but it's there to ease you into bedtime. It does put a couple people to sleep, but for most people, it's a little bit of a wind down and a long meandering, pointless explanation of what the podcast is. Uh, then we'll have some support and then we'll be opening a board game that I got from, for the holidays, uh, from a coworker. So that's cool. And, uh, all told we'll be here just over an hour. So I'm glad you're here. Thanks for checking the show out. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for you twice a week. All right, everybody, it's Scooter here. It's time uh, to talk about Sleep With Me Plus, but more to talk about Sleep With Me. Like, you know, Sleep With Me, why does it even exist, right? Because I had found that most sleep audio that was out there, it didn't work for me. And a lot of it made me feel worse, right? Because it reminded me of how it feels in the deep, dark night. And that's where the idea of Sleep With Me came from, was uh, being lonely in the deep, dark night, needing something to take my mind off of what was keeping me awake. Because I was desperate to sleep, but I was more desperate for all the rigmarole around not being able to sleep to stop. And that's why Sleep With Me exists, because I was like, man, doesn't it, does anybody else in the world want something like this? A friend in the deep, dark night to tell them stories, make them giggle, keep them company so they could fall asleep. And you probably heard me talk about Sleep With Me Plus and supporting the show. Like, why does Sleep With Me need support? We're 100% reliant on uh, listener action to support the show, whether it's supporting the sponsors or supporting the podcast directly. There's no outside funding for Sleep With Me. And at this point, it takes over 120 hours a week to make uh, two episodes of Sleep With Me and put them out and, and keep in touch and do all the stuff to keep the show going, which is it ends up being over 500 hours a month. And in the past, Uh, You know, I used to do as much of that work uh, as I could myself or cut where I could. And, uh, you know, over the years, we have had the support to slowly delegate. And all that means the sport. So show is more sustainable. Like when I was doing it all myself, it just wasn't sustainable. And I think most of the people that rely on Sleep With Me on a regular basis, you want the podcast to be around when when you need it, right? Uh, You want it to be there, whether you listen twice a week or you listen to 10 episodes a night, you count on the show and the show counts on on you, right? And so if you support the show on Sleep With Me Plus, what do you get? Well, you get uh, to listen the way you want to listen. You know, we've learned over the years, like uh, some people like stories, some people like intros, some people like certain styles of episodes, some people like bonus exclusive content. And Sleep With Me Plus is able to offer all that in a way that's easy to find stuff, easy to use. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, you could sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. That's uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. And you can Try out a seven-day free trial if you want. You know, get everything set up and then see what you think. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. Do yourself a favor. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and take that Helix quiz. That was about four years ago that I took the Helix quiz. Got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux, which is a perfect mattress for me and the way I sleep. Because the thing is, the Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux collection, the newly released Helix Elite collection. They have a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. And how would you know which 
which one is going to fit you and your body. You just take that Helix sleep quiz. You find the perfect mattress in under two minutes. That personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new mattress. And here's the thing. Everybody's unique. Everybody sleeps differently. And that is why Helix has uh, several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. You know, if you're like me, I sleep on my stomach and my side. I sleep a hot, so I want to stay cool. And that's what happened. I took the quiz. I got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. I love my Helix Dusk Lux. And the way I know is every time I leave town, I cannot wait to get back that first night back in my Helix Dusk Lux, it's like I'm in a state of sleep bliss. Not only is it the best mattress I've slept on, but setup is fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box straight to your door for free. And Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and use the code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you here. It's where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. Yeah, this part of the podcast a little bit higher energy uh, than the rest of the show because these are the people who keep the show free for everybody. I'm, I would love to be saying your name here. If you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it so I could thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. We haven't heard from anybody in a little while, but I wanted to thank some people who took the time to support the show and to write up some testimonials about why they support the show on Sleep With Me Plus. And uh, I want to thank Sharon, who said, yeah, I, you know, I can afford to support the show. It helps it calm my mind enough to sleep. So there's so much I appreciate about the show. And Sharon said, if you're thinking about supporting the show, remember, it feels so good to support the podcast. And supporting artists, uh, even bore artists, is crucial to them being around. Thank you, Sharon, for supporting the show. If you want to be like Sharon, hear your name on the Sleepy Supporter Zone, support a sponsor, let them know about it, let me know about it. Fill out the form at sleepingmepodcast.com slash sponsors or support the show directly and we'll send you a testimonial uh, to ask your opinion. Thank you so much Sharon. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. Uh, if you're having a tough time, there's links to resources in our show notes, including international resources you could connect with right now. It's also about being a part of positive change with our actions, uh, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying all these things, but taking action, learning more. There's links to resources we could do that in the show notes. And you could join us. Uh, uh, the things we're supporting right now, Sleep With Me directly, me personally, is the Midnight Mission in Los Angeles. It's a shelter uh, that's there to help people experiencing homelessness. We're supporting the Trevor Project. Uh, you can support the Sh Trevor Project uh, directly as well. And we're supporting Hand in Hand. You know, I first heard about Hand in Hand from RGB and I've been supporting it. And right now it's an important time to support an organization looking to move forward. Hand in Hand is Israel's fastest growing integrated social movement. Their work reaches thousands of people every day, proving we can live together as Jews and Arabs, Israelis and Palestinians. And while there's a lot of different ways to support whatever's hurting your heart right now, Hand in Hand is one of those and that's the one we've been supporting and you could learn more uh, about the midnight mission hand in hand or the trevor project and support any of those organizations or support whatever works for you uh, but you can see those links right in our show notes oh mystery bard a lot of people help out in the show who are they Chris posty poster song sounds like an earful wrote the theme song edits episodes too. carl w the ledge also edits episodes ashley too. kenny scotty jennifer runner, runner, Lois, Hannah, like banana. Leah does the transcripts. 
Thanks, Mr. Bard. Don't forget, uh, if you want a freeway, you say, well, I, I love the ad supported show, Scoots, but I prefer something without the supporter zone or without that stuff. If you can't afford to support the show directly, you could sign up for our referral program for free, refer people to the free podcast and get access to ad free episodes and story only episodes. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash R E F E R. That's refer. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show uh hey are you up all night tossing turning mind racing trouble getting to sleep trouble staying asleep welcome uh this is sleep with me the podcast that puts you to sleep we do with a bedtime story all you need to do is get in bed turn out turn out the go to get in bed turn out turn out the lights get in bed turn out the lights and press play i'm already mixed up this is my first uh i don't know when you'll be hearing this this is my first intro of 2024 so welcome to, to, for, to welcome to my past. Uh, uh, get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts on your mind, thoughts you're thinking about, thoughts about the past, the present, the future, thinking thoughts. It could be feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally, like uh, feelings related to those thoughts. Uh, it could be feelings that are left over from the day or feelings that are just there or feelings that are making an appearance. My thoughts and my feelings and my physical sensations like to do an appearance at bedtime where they go, ta-da, but not like, uh, I guess it. that's their spirit. Like, I don't see that. And I think that's how they hope to be received is like, ta-da, we're here performing now or, or competing for your attention. And I say, well, like, no, t here's, a, here's the thing. Unless you're uh, in a partnership, life partnership or a part-time partner, you know, whatever, unless you're, in a, you're sharing a bed with a magician or, you know, like Cole's getting, you know, like uh, has a magician in the other room, uh, like no to dies at bedtime, right? Like uh, keep to dies. I can't say keep to dies out of the bedroom, but keep the to dies out of like, uh, Let's just keep the ta-da, you know, like, uh, no ta-da's, uh, it, oh, I guess that's too, usually I'm fine with generalized statements about stuff, but I don't know if I can make this work, but let's keep the ta-da's to a minimum. Okay. Here's the thing. No impromptu. Well, no, can't do that either. No impromptu ta-da's, you know, cause if you're going to kiss somebody on the cheek or, uh, that would be a pretty good ta-da, ta-da, good night, uh. Let's keep the tadas sleepy, right? Uh, if you're going to have them in the bedroom or a bed. Uh, but or here's the thing. My thoughts, my feelings, my physical sensations. Could you save the tadas for tomorrow when I need them? At, how come you don't do any tadas in the morning? You don't. To, oh, no. To do's. We got a lot of to, also to do's. Well, you say, oh, no. To woes. That's what my instead of to die, you say to do to to D O O M to to woe. Uh, if I could use some tadas when uh, right after the alarm instead of snooze, how about you give me some tadas? Uh, I don't know. How did that even come up? Oh, feelings, uh, feelings, your physical sensations, whatever's keeping you awake, tadas, to do's, or to you know, to to those, uh, to to be to those, to not to those. I didn't even realize that I'm not kidding that T O to I was just thinking of I wasn't thinking of to those, uh, D O Z E. I was just thinking of the like of nonsense word to doze, uh, like pop, like plural do, do do's. But uh, to doze or not to doze, that's not the question with sleep. Sleep with me. it is for new listeners, right? So, uh, whatever's keeping you awake, it could be time travel, routine, work schedule, work shift, uh, guests, anticipation. You could be going through something. You could have something coming up. Uh, it could be something else. Uh, there's a lot of different things keeping people awake. Uh, but for most people that listen to this show, it contains a couple feelings, right? And they're not easy feelings. And We'd prefer to just get some sleep instead of having like those feelings go, ta-da, great news. You're, you know, tomorrow's night, you know, not look, let me give you the weather for tomorrow. And I'm not talking about the weather patterns, I'm talking about predicting the future. Doesn't look good, right? Uh, 
and then you get those feelings or you just, just knowing it's going to be a struggle to fall asleep. Uh, and whether you're in a house full of people or you, you, you're single and uh, maybe you got a dog named Co in your room, maybe Co is not there, uh, whatever it is, uh, it can feel lonely, right? Uh, or other feelings. And, and that's kind of the spirit of the show is that, uh, well, I don't know what exactly you're going through or what's causing you. And maybe you don't know, right? I do know how it feels for me. And I can probably relate to how it feels for you. But here's the thing. Even if you say, I don't think you can, like uh, like what I'm experiencing is pretty unique. It probably is pretty unique, but there's enough people listening that even if someone hasn't experienced the same thing, someone has experienced something similar and they do know how you feel. And they are leaning in right now, those regular listeners People have listened to hundreds of episodes or thousands of episodes, uh, and they're nodding their head right now because they know how you feel. And they, they say, I'm glad you're here. I hope this show can help you because that's important. And the, that other side of that is important. You deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a bedtime where you don't have this rigmarole, this anticipation that doesn't feel so great. You deserve a bedtime where you could get the rest you need so your life is more manageable and ideally you could be out there flourishing. That's the fact of this, that's true. And that's important to me because I know how it feels and I know what it feels like. Uh, and I know when I do get the regular rest I need, um, my life improves. And so I, I want that for you. So that's why I make the show. What I do is I send my voice across the deep, dark night I use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents, which means I go off topic, I get mixed up, I forget what I was saying, then I double back, then I get lost, then I wonder, uh, then I wah wah wonder why my thoughts went away, and then because I, I, I already forgot the other tangent, I went oh to das, so then I you know then I have to say to those oh I didn't even realize I could uh, go I thought it, it was a word that sounds like to, toes, what do you call uh, toe you know toes on a on a dough to those uh, uh, that's a hoof actually sir oh sorry I didn't realize I was at the uh, Institute of Dough Terminology and. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to troll you. Like imaginary part of my brain that corrects me when I call a doze hoove to doze. Uh, what do you call a magician who only makes hooves appear from doze? Uh, a ma you know, obviously not real ones, but you know, some sort of that's some sort of thing. To -do, what do they say instead of to da? They say to doze. Uh, what do you call a sleep podcaster if uh, what I used was magic, but it's really just pointless meanders and superfluous tangents? What would I say if I was doing it in person and I had some sort of magic way to make it happen to those? Or if I was, you know, being Shakespearean, I'd still say to those or not to those. That is not the question. Uh, it's unquestionable. I could go on tangents like this for hours and hours if I needed to. So those are pointless meanders and superfluous tangents, uh, creaky dulcet tones. My voice is not traditionally soothing. It's more b b to be a friend in the deep, dark night, uh, because that's kind of what this show does. Now, this show does not work for most people on the first try. Most people loathe the podcast the first time they listen to it. Uh, and sometimes the second, <laughs> sometimes it's only the first time. Ideally, uh, if you if you total if you're stronger than loathe me, I would sit, still say give the show two or three tries and just see how it goes, because then you can always stop listening. Uh, also, when you do stop listening, I have a website set up sleepwithmepodcast.com/slash no thank you, which has other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there you could check out. So there's that. But then. Um, what was my other point in there? Oh, but but for most people, that's just like what most reviewers say is uh, these are people that became hardcore listeners that support the show. At first, they couldn't stand me. Or they were just like, what is this show? How is this supposed to put me to sleep? And that's not bragging, obviously. It's not something you would brag about. Be like, yeah, most people just, I mean, it's just the truth. Most people, they have a, a slight aversion to me at first. Uh, you say, I don't know about this. Uh 
that's natural. I mean, that's normal. And it comes with a happy, health, happy, help, health, health, uh, healthy dose of skepticism, right? Because if you've tried a bunch of sleep stuff, if you're tired, you're frustrated, why wouldn't you be skeptical about a sleep podcast? I mean, I've been making this show for 10 years, but, or whatever, uh, this is the 11th calendar year we're making the show, I think, or we're past the 11th, we're in the 11th year, maybe, I don't know, but, uh, it, uh, yeah, why wouldn't you be skeptical? I'm supposed to put you to sleep. Shouldn't I be, you know, humming or, or uh, you know, doing some sort of soothing sounds? Or dro- I'm droning, but not the kind of droning you were expecting. So give it a few tries, see how it goes. A couple of things that throw people off is that this is a podcast you just barely listen to. It's just barely supposed to engage you. It does engage you just enough to take your mind off of whatever's keeping you awake, to bring your brain and your thoughts over here where I am, going on my pointless meanders, spinning my wheels, looking at that, as the text-based adventures would say. And, uh, like, so, so, so it's just something that's just outside yourself that you don't have to listen to. You could listen or you could just barely listen. Like, it's okay in this context for you to just dial it in and say, "Uh uh-huh. Okay, great. Spinning your text adventures. Don't know what that is. Great. Don't know what that is. Don't care. Great, though. Uh-huh. Tell me more. Uh-huh. 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 You could do that with sleep, sleep with me, and you don't even have to even do it that much. You don't even have to be that active. You could, you know, you could just passively. There's some people that listen to me and mumble, and then there's some people that mostly listen until they stop listening. Or there's people who can't sleep who are listening, because this podcast, believe it or not, even though, like, when I started this show, it was kind of a new idea, sleep podcast, bedtime stories for grown-ups. Um, this podcast isn't really meant or designed to put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep, to take your mind off of stuff so you can fall asleep. Because, you know, thinking about falling asleep and trying to make it work never worked for me. Uh, forgetting about the fact I was trying to fall asleep was the only thing that ever worked. So I don't know. It's a, it, in that sense, it is a little bit like the one part of magic where it's misdirection. I'm trying to misdirect you uh, or direct your attention over here. And that's my job. I'm here to be, cause I'm here to the very end. Like part of it is that the show is complete. The stories are complete. They're full of meanders, tangents, fluff, you may say. Uh, but they go, they reach some kind of bare, barely reach some kind of conclusion. They're barely entertaining because there's people who are listening who can't sleep at all or who, or who need a break during the day. And because they listen, it's, it's some sort of, uh, I don't know, like what the right word is. It's not irony or, or whatever, but, uh, that the fact that there are people listening means that you don't have to listen And that maybe part of your brain says, oh, because I know I could listen, I don't need to. I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, even though I've been doing it for a long time. But it does in a sense, right? I'm here for you. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar best, your neighbor, your boar bud, your boars, your boar bee, your boar bra. You know, if you're in Orange, and if you're in any county named Orange County, I'm your boar bra. And, uh, like, or you're Orange County adjacent, right? And, uh, like, uh, that's part of the spirit of the show. You say, oh, okay, you're just like a friend I call who who, talk, who has no expectation of me listening to them, but they'll talk to me while I fall asleep. I said, "That's you got it now. Holy cow. This is a podcast that's never going anywhere. So that could throw people off. The other thing that throws people off is the structure of the show. And we've been doing the show a, a, like a long time. And, and uh, there's a lot of ways to adjust the podcast as you become a regular listener. But the structure is based on the way most people experience the podcast. But then you can adjust it. So let me lay it out for you, right? It's intentional. So show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Then I say something, an attempt at being somewhat humorous or goofy. That way you say, okay, I feel seen and welcomed in. I get the show is a little bit different. Maybe I'll check it out. Or for regular listeners, they say, oh, there's my boar bud. Not making very much sense again. I'm glad He's glad I'm here. And I'm glad I'm here. I'm in the right spot. 
that's a regular listener. For a new listener, say, I don't know, is this the right spot for me? Maybe I'll check. Let me check it out for a little bit. Then there's support so the show could be free. And that's just how most people consume it is like uh, they prefer the ad-supported version of the show. If you prefer ad-free version, you could support the show at Sleep With Me Plus and pay for an ad-free experience. Or you could refer people to the show uh, like and join our referral program. Really, either one works. Then after the support is a long meandering intro. And some people, when they don't like the fact that this show, like, like they get, they, they, they dismiss the intro strongly, but the intro is not some sort of self-congratulations. It's not part of the support. It's about a 15 minute show within a show where I talk about the podcast in a very inefficient way that's different every single time, but follows a familiar structure every single time. So you have some sort of reassurance, oh, okay, but it's different. So your brain or whatever's keeping you awake can't quite adjust or predict what I'm going to say. So it stays barely engaging. Uh, I don't know. That's important to me. Otherwise, I could just make a two-second intro or repeat the intros. But the intros are an important part of the show. Not just for that part, like you say, okay. I get it, but the intro is not so much meant to put you to sleep. There's 2% of people that skip the intro, probably about 2% of people that fall asleep during the intro, but for most people, the intro is part of the process of getting to sleep. So people are getting ready for bed or winding down or getting comfortable. While the intro could put you to sleep, it's meant to ease you into bedtime. And that's what's worked for me personally and what most uh, fact-based stuff shows. Having a wind-down routine works. So that's what the intro is. Uh, Then there's support after the intro, and then there'll be a story. Tonight we'll be unboxing a board game. It'll be fun. A lot of tangents, a lot of uh, wah-wah wondering, because it's about wandering towers. Uh, so it'll be fun, uh, or, or barely fun. Uh, and then the show ends with thank yous and good nights. Uh, so that's the structure show. That's why I make the show. I'm really glad you're here. I re- work really hard on this podcast. So do a bunch of other people. We all yearn and strive to help you fall asleep. So thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here. I'm talking about Sleep With Me Plus. If you haven't checked out a trial, you know, there's a seven-day trial at all levels at Sleep With Me Plus. You go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, sign up, you know, cancel in six days uh, before your trial renews. But I want to talk about a uh, email I get uh, somewhat often. It kind of goes like a little bit like this. So maybe you can relate to this email. You know, Scoots, I love this podcast. I've been listening to it for years. It has changed my life. It has changed how I sleep. And I know most people love listening to this ad supported version. They listen linearly and they wind down during the intro. They fall asleep during the story. But Scoots, I'm different. I love the show, man. But the thing is, I, I listen all night long and, you know, the just transitions between the shows and the ads or, oh, man, like with Supporter Zone, I fall asleep early during the intro. And then I hear the Supporter Zone or so, the, the sponsors between the story or I'm a musician. So hearing the Mystery Bard sing and I want you to know, yeah, I see you. You love the podcast. It's had this powerful impact. I'm putting you to sleep. You consider that priceless, right? That's what we designed Sleep With Me Plus for, for all those people, people that listen all night, people that just want the intros, people that just want the stories, musicians who don't want any music, they get that story only feed, people that don't want to hear the supporter zone, they don't want to hear the ads, they don't want to hear the thank yous at the end. You just want one specific show, a lot of it, whether it's Bake Off or TNG or the store, certain stories, you want exclusive content. All those people are a little bit different and that's what we finally have been able to offer with Sleep With Me plus is for those of you that say, I love this show, but I could, I, could, I could use a little bit more of this or a little bit less of this. So get over there. Sleep with Me Plus was made for you. We've been waiting 10 years to be able to do this for you. So you could sign up and again, test it out first. Uh, it works in almost every podcast app, even on Spotify. And you could sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus and check it out. Thanks. All right, buddy, this is Scoots here. This is a board game unboxing. This board game is big. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a bigger box. It's not a card game. 
and it's I've not opened the box yet. I took off the wrapping. Seems really cool. It's also a gift from somebody that works on the show, uh, Rusty Biscuit, Russell. And uh, Russell's worked on the show for a few years uh, now, more than a few years. I guess time flies. And he was generous enough to send me this game. I don't even know what the intention of getting it on the show, but surprise, Russell. Also, not to plug Russell, uh, but I will put Russell's uh, info in this episode. Because if you're if you're looking for a, a wonderful actor, I would, I mean, talk about bad ideas. Uh, uh, I consider Russell to be my boss. I'm not kidding. Because uh, Russell's really good at managing uh, everything behind the scenes of the show. And it was something I'd missed for years and years and years. So I hate to do this, but I, like Russell's an amazing actor. So if you are like a casting something, a directing something, a thinking about directing something, uh, use the link. I know, I mean, I know there's people out there listening who are. Uh, cast Russell uh, or try, try, you know, see if Russell fits one of your casting needs. Uh, Shakespearean chops, uh, Russell's got them. So I don't know of anybody... I mean, you do know we did possibly get a shout out in the Mandalorian, but I'm not positive about that because no one at the Mandalorians ever con- confirmed that. But listeners have, uh, like uh, the great uh, baby oh so uh, oh so sleepy scene. I mean, for me, it's a little bit, but but so, so like because I know a lot of uh, like a Star Wars casting in the past has uh, been Shakespearean. But it doesn't need, I mean, but any, any project, uh, just, just make sure, uh, like to give Russell a trailer where it could, could do Russell, Russell could continue to work on the podcast ideally and maybe in both worlds. But you know, if it's a regular, I mean, if, if Russell has to move on to, from the show, it would be regular on a series or something that's awesome or becomes a, you know, blockbuster star. Uh, you know, then Russell could take, I, I, I wouldn't want to do this either, but Russell could take over for Antonio Banderas. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, Antonio, even though he's not listening. I mean, he is later. Okay. So thanks Russell for this gift. Thanks for all the hard work you do on the show. Uh, I know a lot of people think I just sit down and record these episodes and we put them out, but it takes tons and tons and tons of labor. And it really is labor, uh, labor of love, but a lot of hard work, uh, not just with Russell, but with Carl and Chris and Tatiana uh, and everyone else. Uh, there's like a, like a Charlotte, Leah, Anna, everybody at PRX uh, that works on the show and helps out in the show. Uh, Lashante uh, comes to mind as our primary person. Uh, everybody that works on the podcast, so uh, we couldn't do it without everybody. And everybody's worked with the show in the past. Uh, uh, but this one goes out to Russell for this gift. Uh, it's called, the name of the game is Wandering Towers. And the box is a rectangle. It is like the long side of the rectangle is, lo- is as long as my fingers and forearm. So what is that? Like uh, definitely tw- two, two, feet, two, two feet, one and a half to two feet. And then probably 12 inches, maybe nine. No, that's probably 12 inches. Uh, holy cow. Maybe not. Maybe 16. So maybe two feet by 16 inches. I don't know. Uh, like is the rectangle. And then I'd say it's uh, three or four inches thick. Uh, name of the game is Wandering Towers. Uh, it's by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling. And CG is the, uh, we'll find out more about the company that runs it, but it just says CG. And the artwork on the top is, um, we have uh, Wandering Towers at the top, uh, written a cool font, and then a blue cloudy sky, and then mountain, a mountainous backdrop. And then as we pan below, before we get to the main things, uh, there's also a forest, a couple of rolling hills, clouds, uh, or, or, or fog. There's a antlered, uh, what do they call this? Not an antelope, but a, a moose or antelope or something. A fox and a, ho- a owl. A howl? No, owl. They're moving away. 
There's also three pigeons in the in the sky, and then a rabbit. Next to the rabbit is a wizard, and this is a like Middle Ages D and D type wizard. It got like in a crimson maroon ruby style uh, robe with a hat. Uh, also has a what those things called? Sta- not a staff. What's it like? A magic wand. It's casting something that's also reddish and ruby. They have a flask uh, at their hip, probably with some sort of, you know, potion. And the wizard's back to his, and is casting a spell on a tower, which seems to be, maybe it's wandering. Then there's another tower, behind, like, behind the forest. Uh, at a distance, there's two wizards on that tower casting stuff. Uh, they're casting something in lime green, one of them. The other one seems to be preparing something. And the tower is teetering. It has three stories to it. Uh, the tower in the distance probably has three stories too. And that's it. Now, on the bottom short or no, on the sides. Let's go to the sides next. So, so the short side, the like uh, rear end of the short side. I don't know what you call that. Is that like the back of uh, the bottom of the inside? You know, the back of the bottom of the bottom of the top of the bottom of the drawer? It says wandering towers, and there's a frog drinking uh, a, lo- a potion that a wizard has left behind. Uh, its tongue is out, and it looks like a, not a strawberry po- potion, but uh, it's a little bit. It looks like a my I don't, know, I don't know. It looks good. It's kind of a milky reddish, milky color, and so that's that side. Then the next side. Okay, we get some instructions here. Is wandering towers. It shows the two towers from the cover. Well, oh no, only one pigeon or dove is flying, and but there's still two wizards. And so there's two towers: cloudy blue sky, wandering towers, CG. Then it has the ages ten plus, so ten ages ten and up. Uh, number of players one to six. So I could play this solo, but I'll probably play it with my daughter. And it's a thirty minute game. Then again, the the top short side is the same as the side. Wandering towers. It just shows that one tower, blue sky, CG. Oh boy! And then this one on the long other side, it has wandering towers. It has a tower and mist and and uh, wood, forest and rolling hill, but also some sparkling magic is happening in the wandering tower. So a lot of cool stuff. We haven't even got to the back of the box yet, huh? Okay, on the back of the box, uh, we have Wandering Towers on the top left. It looks like it's written, It's uh, it looks like a kind of a, a scroll set against the blue sky. It's got, you know, or, 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 or a treasure map style uh, piece of paper. Okay, it has three pictures and then uh, some other stuff. Uh and it's laid out, you know, to be pleasing to the eye, uh, which I don't know how to describe. But like, there's three circles with gameplay happening. We have meeples, wizard meeples, by the way. But I don't know if they're meeple. Is, is it a meep? If it's it's more, if it's just a me, meeple person, a merson? Isn't a meeple a group of people? I don't know. Is a meeple an actual term or is that just something from one game that I started applying? But it says, okay, number one, get your wizards to Raven's Keep. Uh, and we see a red meeple, uh, a wizard meeple, uh, going uh, like uh, with a red arrow going to the top of Raven's Keep. Uh, and Raven's Keep is a keep. It uh, looks like it's nighttime. There's a raven, uh, maybe a raven statue above the door, r- windows, and par- par- are those called parapets or whatever? What's the other word that I actually know how to pronounce that, uh, ba- not bastions, uh, I don't know. You know, the things on the top of towers and, and castles, uh, none of which I know how to say. I almost said, uh, not then the vestiges was the next word that popped in my head. I know that one's not correct. Parapets. I don't think that's, um, correct. Uh, there's a podcaster whose name I mispronounced last week. Everybody laughed at me, not on the show, just in real life. Okay, so then two, and it's in a green circle, which really helps your tracking. Uh, 
I don't know, it just makes it look good. Then two, ride flying towers. Uh, there's a red meeple. It's riding a flying tower, which is moving. It's a two-story tower, but its tower is moving. We also see octagon board pieces that are interlinked. Uh, and three, uh, catch wizards got, got to, can't, can't say got to catch them all because that's probably owned by somebody else. But uh, you can catch your wizards t- to uh, fill up your potion bottles with their essence, of course. So then we have the red wizard flying. Wait a second, is this one? So you start off getting your wizards to Raven Keeps, not, not number. I don't know. I, I don't know. That's why we do a board game unboxing. Do we need to get our Wizards to Ravens keep one? Or is number one goal? Number two goal, ride flying towers. What if you rode the fly? What if there was, was ever a faulty towers board game? I don't know. But um, number three, catch, gotta catch them, catch your Wizards essences uh, to fill your potion bottles. So this one has uh, the tower landing on another tower with a green wizard, a purple wizard, and a rust colored wizard meeple. And there's magic happening. We also see some of the octagons. Uh, they're interconnected. There's one, there's a dock. Uh, there's a road. There's one with stones. There's one with trees. There's one with, uh, maybe was that a fountain or something? Okay, before we get to the copy, though, or the further copy, we got, uh, you know, by the way, this is not no three and under, man. There's meeples in this, so no three and under, please. And the color and content is subject to change without notice. You got your UCP, UPC code. Uh, illustrator, Michael Menzel. Designers, Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling. All rights reserved by Abacus Biel. Uh, it's uh, GB, something about the, it's a German company made in Germany. Capstone Games, that's the CG. Cincinnati, Ohio. So I guess, I don't know, does it sell under AS, uh, Abacus Spiel in Germany and in, in Europe and then Capstone Games in the U.S.? I don't know. Let's hop over contents and then we'll go to the copy. Uh, we got, well, oh, maybe we shouldn't. Well, yeah, because I don't know if we'll, there's, holy cow, there's 24 wizard meeples. So I was, meeples is not cap, nothing's capitalized except for Raven's Keep. Uh, there's towers, landscape tiles, spells, movement cards. 24 wizard meeples. Holy cow. I could play all day. 36 potion bottles, uh, a player token, rule book, and a dice, a single dice, which, you know, is uh, a big farm, big farmed. One big farmed. What's, uh, what's the singular of dice in Sleep With Me podcast that we just discovered for the first time? Whatever we're on, episode 12, I don't know, almost uh, 1250 or something. Yeah, what's a, so dice is plural for one big farm. It's a, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Well, if you listen to Sleep With Me, it might. Uh, yeah, you have dice, and then we have a single big farm. Uh, uh, it doesn't, I love it. Uh, still discovering new things uh, that only make sense on the show and are barely hilarious. Uh, one big farm. Uh, I, I, how did, have I noticed that before? I just never, or did I just call it what it was? Okay, so let's see. I'll do a paraphrase of the of the copy. Gra- each, every year, graduating classes, the classes of Raven's Realm Magic School, they get to demonstrate their master. Okay, so this is like a safe space. Uh, it's just a school. Final exam. Everybody's procrastinated. They're distracted. They're trying to learn new stuff. Uh, They've used up all their potions, but uh, they can't show up unprepared with empty potion bottles. Okay, so yeah, they are trying to get to Raven's Keep as quickly as possible using magic. Uh, They could even move the very towers on top which they stand to get there more easily, but how can they refill their bottles along the way? Here's the secret. We took it from, you know... Follow, you know, basically Pokemon, but not totally because it's not, it's just more of an essence. Essence in a bottle, man. Or, you know, if you're listening to that song by the authority, another one, the authority figures. Uh, what band was Sting in? The authority figures. They had a song, uh, uh, ma- ma- Magic in a Bottle. 
And Christina Aguilera had a song, Genie in a Bottle. It, it's an essence in a bottle, baby. Uh, I think I'd rather, yeah, I think I'd go with uh, Christina versus the authority figures. Uh, I thought it was shorter than that. I don't remember Sting being in a band with, like, multiple words. Uh, the author- yeah, it was the authority figures. You just say it fast, the authority figures. Uh, no, it doesn't sound right. Uh, didn't they? Yeah, they had a song, Synchronicity, right? Uh, her album. Uh, but, yeah, Christina Aguilera, Essence in a Bottle, Baby. Okay, time to open the box. Uh, you know, you won't hear me, but I'll be back because i got to open the box and then see what kind of other stuff i got to do. Also, you know what I just realized? Because uh, mo- we've been opening a lot of tins. This box is a uh, box. This box will make a, you know, have you ever opened a box and it makes box gas? Uh, like your box passes gas? This one will do that. I could sense it. Uh you know, because of the, I don't know, the actions of the gas on the inside, va- something vacuum. Your game box passes, makes a passing gas sound. It does. Uh, how come people don't do any more? This is, again, we're really digging into sleep with me stuff here. Only on sleep with me would you realize it. What do you need a whoopee cushion for? We got a, a ton of board games. Just find a board game that makes a gas sound. Uh Okay, so I'm going to open it, and, I, you know, I'll probably edit out the gas sound. Okay, it didn't make the gas sound because, uh, we could, of course, I put it on the spot. I was a little shy, you know. The box said, oh, boy, I'm shy now, even though you're not, you're going to uh, edit it. Okay, so one thing I like right off the top, I'm assuming this is a rule book. Uh, it is very thin. That means it's concise. We'll get back to it, uh, I'm hoping. Okay, another thing I really like, uh, it, this is some assembly required, but it is on, on printed on cardboard. And, oh boy, it's got that cardboard new game smell. Yeah, let's go through the card. You're right, let's go through the cardboard. My cardboard's upside down, so I'm going to flip it over here. How many cardboard How many cardboard sheets do we have? Five. Uh, cardboard sheet one, we've got the L emblem for Raven's w- Woods or whatever. We've got the tower topper base, the tower sides, uh, and then we have a a tower that looks like a, a tan tower. I, oh, yeah, they're different. This one's a tannish, ta- dark tan tower. And then we have some potion bottles. So these are green wizard potions. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the green essence in a bottle, baby. Uh, then we have yellow or yeah, yellow, not that kind of yellow, more of a bright yellow, not lemonade. Well, I guess it could be considered that essence. Uh, but yeah, it's uh one, two, three, four, five, six, then a blue essence for the blue wizards. And that's it for that one. Number two coming in at number two, uh, two more towers or maybe, yeah, one, no, two more towers. Uh, these are sand colored and then tower bases. One of the bases or tops has, a, um, uh, what do you, I guess they're the tops of the tower. They, uh, uh, this tower has a uh, Ravenscraft's em- emblem on the, on the roof. Uh, and then we have one section of the map, uh, with one, two, four, is it an octagon? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Except it's interconnected, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, eight. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But they're interconnected. It's because it has a tab on either, like, an end so you can connect them. This is the one with the Raven's Crafts, Raven's Woods base. Uh, then a stone area. There's a, tr- there's a pass. Uh, this is the one from the cover. It has a a dock into a lake or river, and then another one. Oh, and then three silver wizard's potions. I don't know if those are more rare or we'll get more later. Next up, upside down, but we'll make it work. Uh, two more towers. These are even an even darker brown color. But burnt to- Not burnt toast, but almost burnt toast color. Well done toast color. Two of those. 
along with their tops, but they don't have any uh, symbols on them. And then another piece of the board, only four, um, four octagons. Uh, this one is kind of like a fall f feel, uh, even though the trees are green. I don't know. It's kind of got a sepia tone to it. Green. It's uh, going through the farmlands or something. Or there's two, there's a little farm like uh, or whatever field section. I mean, it could be wild growing grass and rows. And then we have three amber, uh, orangish amber hued wizard potions on that one. Okay, this is confusing. Uh, it, 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 I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, we have two more towers, one with Raven's, Raven's symbol. Nevermore? No, no, just Raven symbol, not Nevermore. Uh, but so these ones are back to the mid, or no, the lighter sandy color, I guess. And uh, that one has the Raven's Craft symbol, did I say that? Then three more silver uh, potions, and then this is why it's confusing. There's another, at the foot of the mountains is another place with a raven's craft uh, shield or whatever you want to call it, a tree stripped of its leaves because we're at the base of the mountains and then a path going through the mountains. So, so four octagons, one in the mountain foothills, and then three in the mountains, the last one coming out of the mountains. All right, number whatever. I think we this is is this our last? No, no, we got one more after this. Okay, so now we have two more towers. Uh, can these are the burnt toast color towers? We got three more amber potions, uh, orangish amber, and then we have uh, another sepia one. But this path goes through the forest clearly. Uh, it's got you know pine, evergreen trees. One has another tree. As you exit the forest, like a more bushy tree, deciduous possibly, but I can't guarantee that. Okay, then we have, like, I, I don't know why this curious pose has just popped in my mind, but, uh, okay, so we have six more silver potions. I don't know, what do we got, 12 silver potions or something? Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight circles, uh, coin, like larger than a coin, though. And they have wizards doing stuff. I don't know. So these are like uh, awards or action things, uh, buffs, or you could cash them in. So the first one is it has a cost, uh, one silver potion or, or a gift that it comes with. And the wizard is lifting a tower above them or onto themselves. Then the next one has a wizard in the wind, and its cost is two. It's a negative one like wind for the wizard, uh, for two. Then you have one that costs or whatever is only one silver potion, but it's a negative two. And it shows a, like a, like a leaning tower in the wind. Then after that is a two, it doesn't have a plus or minus, but it shows one wizard carrying another wizard on, on their back. Uh, so friendship type stuff, uh, then we have a plus two, which is uh, one silver potion. It shows the wizard of the tower floating along. That's plus two, a three-story tower. Okay, the next one is two potions. It shows uh, the actual ravens keep moving. So that, it, it, like, fl flying on the back of a stone raven almost. So I don't know, like, uh, that must... Uh, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. Like, maybe you can move it from one place to another, which would make sense, uh, even in Dragonlance. So in Dragonlance, there was three wizard's towers, depending on which uh, school of magic you went to. No, there's more than three, though, I think, because uh, I can't remember. But one of them could move. Uh, and then there's another one that costs two potions. It's a plus one. It shows a wizard running. So presumably the, yeah, these are like buffs or like help you with motion. Then there's another one with two and it shows, uh, I think two towers switching their tops maybe. I don't know. Okay. So that's it for that. Then I have two things that are meant to hold stuff. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Then we have our big farm or our singular dice. Uh, it's made of wood. 
Or, yeah, and it's, uh, so that's nice. Uh, it's a nice little feature. Oh, okay, I guess this is for keeping stuff organized. So this box, you can, it comes with its own organizational thing. That's nice. So that's pretty cool, like, uh, that you could keep it organized, right? Uh, okay. Because, okay, oh, how do why, I, I got to explain what I mean. So I have the empty box, but it's not empty. It has uh, one, two, three, four lanes in it. And then those pieces I just went, so it means you get separated into nine things. And it has symbols. Uh, there's one for the red meeples and potions and some tower for the orange, for the yellow. Uh, so uh, there's a place for everything. So that, this is just like how Russell helps me run the podcast, keeping things organized, not joking. Okay, then we have the bag of meeples, uh, which, of course, I have to take out. So there's uh, purple meeples. Uh, got three of the Actually, oh, boy. Okay, so it just took a second to organize things and put install the... Uh, it's got its own cubbies, I guess, basically. The way I have it turned, it's like a cubby. Uh, okay, so there's three purple meeples. There's uh, four red meeples, three orange meeples, four green meeples, five blue meeples, and five yellow meeples. And next up are the cards. Uh, Okay, all the backs of the cards look like a spell book with Raven on it. Uh, and, uh, um, okay, the, um, oh, I see. This is like, the, so there's a one, two, three, four with a running wizard. Uh, it has a number one on it, which we saw earlier. So you maybe draw a card and then you get that buff. Oh, but no, then there's uh, one, two, three, four, with a running wizard with a two on it. And it's like the spell book is open on another side of the page is like stuff written in wizard language, which if I obviously if I try to read it, um, that could, you know, if you've ever seen any movies, like that would be, you know, like uh, that Friday, that was so strange with, you know, the multiple versions of the Friday, that was so strange. Uh, or there was one with Dudley Moore and Kirk Cameron uh, where you say, hey, this is, let's switch it up. Uh, I wonder if we could get Lindsay Lohan and Kirk Cameron in a switcheroo move, like, uh, uh, probably not. Uh, but Lindsay Lohan was in that, that, that super strange Friday where we did the swap. Uh, okay, so the next one is number three, same wizard running. There's four of those. Then number four, the wizard running. Then number five, the wizard running. Is there more than, is there one, two, three? Uh, okay, four. So there's four of all of those. Okay, but those also have a gray, the gray, a gray number, and it's gray where the wizard's running, and the wizard's writing is gray. Just in case we have to do this again, you know, if I have to undo any of this, they say, "What happened to the uh, time-space continuum economy?" And some some dude with a sleep podcast tried to read wizard's writing. It turned out it was real, and of course he can't even read his own. He read it as his own handwriting. And uh, hence, once again, we had to go back in time. And uh, so, okay, so n these next ones have a number, but it's a, to a three tower and the wizard's writing, which obviously I won't read. And it goes up till number five. Oh, boy. And then we get a double. Okay, so then the next card has a running wizard and the towers with numbers uh, no wizard writing so these are safe cuz i can i mean unless i read it as a you know pictogram and then there's those uh, and those have different numbers oh each one has a different number so there's 1111112222222 what is a wizard in a wizard's tower wear when they do ballet 2222s two, 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 so, uh, Okay, then three, 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 four, 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 four. 
What is what does a wizard and a tower say when they play golf and they hit the ball at the same time and then they say, look at four 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 four. Then it switches up to five one, five with the tower, one with the wizard, five one, five one, five one. How tall was that tower? It's five one, five one, four two with the tower, four two with the tower, four two with the tower, four two, four two. Then two four with the tower and the wizard two four two four two four. You know what it what it was when you tried to when I tried to write something Shakespearean, like one line using numbers for Russell to say it was uh, what two four are are, are on ye cards. Uh, okay, then one five uh, one five with the tower, and oh boy, then. Okay, then we got, oh boy, so these are a little variety here. Then there's dice, so you roll your own, man, uh, dice symbols on each one. So that one, and then a double dice, so two rolls for the tower. What was that song, the folk song, Scooter tried to write about the game he was unboxing? Two rolls for the tower, two rolls for the wizard. Actually, it was another reboot of Seven Brides and Seven Fan, you know, Seven Wizards or whatever. Seven Towers for Seven Wizards. Uh, it was a rom com, actually. Oh, there's a triple roll uh, for each one, too. How many rolls are there? Oh, there's only one triple roll, though. So that's really, you know, good to get. All right. So I have everything unboxed. I'll be honest, I have no idea of the gameplay at this point. Uh, so we're going to have to dig into the rules here. Okay, starts off with the contents of the box. First, you assemble Raven's Keep. Uh, it's three steps. Uh, it's actually four steps. Take it out. First, r before you play your game, remove all components from the punch boards. What's your favorite drink? Uh, what's your favorite punch? Punch board punch. Uh, okay, then assemble Raven's Keep in the nine towers as depicted below. Don't worry, you'll be able to store them in the box without disassembling them. Thank you, game. This is great. All right, so we got Raven's Keep. Uh, three st after you take it out of the thing, it's three steps. One, fold it together. Two, put the top on. Three, push the top down. You're good. Then there's five Raven Towers and four normal towers. Uh, oh, the Raven's Towers, obviously, are the ones that can fly, maybe. Okay, and that's, careful, insert the bat, oh, they're called battlements, uh, dance-offments. Uh, battlements changes to dance-offments and sleep a little behind the scenes. Uh, do that carefully with these towers. Not with the Raven's Tower for some reason, but uh, just so you don't fold them down. Plus, you got to do, you know, the towers got to land on each other. So that's only two steps. I don't understand, oh, because you don't have to, no, no, I guess it just kind of, uh, they wanted to put that careful in, so they dropped it to two steps. Okay, then you got landscape tiles. Uh, they're arranged in a circular path, 16 spaces. Some spaces have blue fairy lights uh, in clockwise order. Place the three light spaces, the two light spaces, and the one light spaces, and then the others. Don't understand that, but I will. Uh, Raven's Keep starts at one and can end at four. Okay, then those other circular ones, the coins are magic spells. And then we have 90 movement cards. Uh, okay, so that's how you move, obviously. Then we have the meeples, the starting player token in the form of raven shield, potion bottles, and one singular dice. Okay, goal of the game is to fill your potion bottles, all of them, and get all of your wizards to Raven's Keep. Uh, doesn't matter what you do first, though. Move your wizards into Raven's Keep, keep, keep with good timing. Fill up your potions uh, by landing, you know, like uh, like uh, picking other wizards up in their essences. Uh, but if your own wizards are stuck, uh, you got to free them. Okay, so it's like you're taking the essence, but you're not taking the wizard. Okay, set up, set up the landscape tiles, place Raven's Keep on the starting spot. Going clockwise, pay, place a tower centered on each of the nine spaces as followed. Ra start with the Raven's Tower, 
then alternate normal and raven's towers. I.e., you go raven's keep, then a tower, then a raven, then normal. I mean, who, who, who's, who am I to call any towers normal? Like, or regular, but uh, I'm not. I didn't, you know, I'm just uh, paraphrasing. Uh, then you set up the spells. For your first game, there's only two spells. Advance a wizard and advance a tower. Uh, face up near the circular path. Return the other six spells to the box. So for more excitement, randomly se select a number of spells. The more spells, the more tactical the game becomes. Uh, place them near the circular path. Return the rest to the box. Shuffle the movement cards. Deal each, each player three cards for their hand. Return the rest to the infield of the circular path uh, with a discard pile. Place the single big farm or the big farm, big farmed in the center in the infield of the circular path. I'd like to be, on, I feel like I am on the circular path. I said I'd like to be on the circular path, but I actually am uh, trying to get off it. I'm on the ovular path, obviously. Uh, okay, then you pick a starting player, starting player token. Turn order is clockwise, starting with this player. Okay, so choose a starting player, a starting player token, and then turn orders clockwise. Okay, it took me twice to realize uh, that. Okay, each player chooses a player color. Different colors are available at different player counts. See table below. And then takes a number of wizards and potion bottles uh, for your player counts. Oh, wow. So if you only have two players, you can only play blue and... Um, Yellow, five wizards. Who are you calling my wizards yellow? No, your wizards are your your meeples. Your wizard meeples are yellow. Yellow? You mean? Uh, okay, there's six potions. Then if you go to three players, there's only four wizards and five potions, and you can be blue, yellow, red, or green. If you move to four players, it's still four and five. Five players, three and four. So you'd be any blue, yellow, red, green, orange purple uh that goes for six as well your potions go in front of you empty side up uh i never looked on the back of the things just realized that uh oh so the silver is just that it's empty oh scoots uh learning something new i didn't realize the the, the, the everything was two-sided you know that's just uh i'm short-sighted man short-sighted too all right, let's get into the gameplay already. Okay, then potions go in front of you. Okay, each tower's space depicts a, a tiny number of blue, blue, blue. Oh, they changed it to Casper lights here. It was fairy lights before. The first three spaces have three fairy lights. The next three have two, and the final three have one. These lit lights indicate the number of wizards that start atop each tower. Filled each tower to its number as follows. Starting with the first, this is complicated, uh, I mean, for me, reading it. Okay, for the first tower, you do the following. One wizard, in, in turn order, place one of your wizards in this tower. If the number of to wizards on that tower matches the number of blue lights uh, in the space, skip to the next tower. Continue like this till everyone has all of their wizards on towers. Okay, so like Tower 1, I can't see, but it, it looks like it's three or four wizards on there. Right now in the example, they're playing a one, two, three, four-player game. Okay, playing the game clockwise. Uh, starting player, you, on your turn, you must play two cards from your hand face up on the discard pile one at a time, people. For each card you play, you can perform... It's move if at all possible. Alternatively, you may forego both actions and discard your entire hand and advance any tower one space clockwise. But you got to see cards that move a tower below. In either case, at any time during your turn, you may spend full potion bottles to cast one spell. See casting a spell. Finally, draw to refill your hand to three cards. 
Each time the deck is depleted, reshuffle with the discards. Movement cards. There's three cards, movement cards. Cards that move a wizard. Those have a wizard on the right side of the page book. Cards that move a tower. Those have a tower on the left side. Cards that move either a wizard or a tower. These cards depict a tower on the left and a wizard on the right. Cards that move a wizard. You move one of your visible wizards. Uh, if the card depicts a number, advance the wizard exactly that number of spaces. Uh, if the card depicts a single big farm, a big farm, to roll the big farm to determine exactly how far the wizard will advance. Uh, each additional big farmed, so if it's dice instead of big farmed, well, it's still you, each roll, you roll your big farmed once. You may re-roll your big farmed once. However, if you do, you forfeit the previous roll. Okay, so for the one with multiple ones, you just get to pick your highest roll. Only after your final roll, you have to move uh, that number. Okay, so that's you just re-roll. So that's a little risk taken there. Whenever a wizard's move ends in a space with a tower in it, uh, the wizard goes atop the tower rather than in the space. Cards that move a tower. You can move any tower. Ravens keeps it out a tower, by the way. Uh, along with everything stacked atop it, yes. If Raven's Keep is atop the stack, it goes along too. Once you've lifted a tower, you cannot change your mind. That has a star, which I'll look up here. I don't see it. I don't know. The star, now I've lost my spot. Uh, I don't know. You cannot change your mind. There's a star. We'll find out what that means. Uh, no tears are probably something. Save your tears for another day or a rainy day. Okay, if a card depicts that number, advance the tower exactly that number of spaces. If the card depicts a big farm, so it's the same. Uh, whenever a tower's move ends in a space with towers in it, the tower goes on top. Uh, and those wizards, you catch them all. Uh, note, all nine towers and Raven's Keep could end up in the same space. Oh, there's a continuation to the next page. Okay, so this goes to continued for wizards. Each tower, not a very good layout here. No offense, but uh, you might keep it all on one page because uh, this is confusing for a sleep podcast. Okay, cards that move a tower, wizard. Uh, each tower, an empty space that can hold up to six wizards. If a move would exceed that limit, you can't move it. Uh, so no more than six wizards. Whenever a wizard's move ends in the space with Raven's Keep, uh, Perform the following steps. Put the wizard in Raven's Keep, where the wizard will remain to the end of the game. Advance Raven keeps keep clockwise to the next space or tower top, depicting a, a Raven's Shield with no wizards in it. If there are no spaces, the Raven's Keep stays where it is. Your turn ends immediately if you put a wizard in there. Fill your card your cards. Note you must always use the full movement. If the movement number would take the wizard past Raven's Keep, you can't do that. Uh, you can't stop short. Okay, cards that move a tower. A tower is moved ends in a space with wizards in it. The tower covers the wizards. Uh, if your move would put a put a tower on Raven's Keep, you can't make that move. Note: If you accidentally lift a tower, whose move would place it atop Raven's Keep, your turn ends immediately. Wow! So if you're bad at counting, like me. Well, your turn ends immediately without moving the tower you lifted. Okay. Catching the wizards. Uh, if you move a tower in such a way that it catches wizards, uh, they're caught until it's uncovered and they're visible again. When you catch a wizard, even your own, you may fill one potion bottle, no matter how many wizards, uh, by flipping it over. If you have no empty potion bottles, you can still catch the wizards, but you can't fill your potions. Because you're catching wizards covered, sir, covered, you can't, you got to remember where they are. Wow, you can't peek. Wow, I like this. this game's getting interesting. Uh, it's much easier to fill potion bottles earlier in the game when fewer wizards are caught. No, noted, noted. Cards that can move wizard or tower, move uh, one of your visible wizards or move any tower. If a card depicts a number, announce whether you're moving a wizard or a tower, then advance exactly that number. 
If the card depicts a dice, roll the dice to determine exactly how which how far a wizard or tower will advance. And uh, if, if uh, did I say big farm dice uh, or whatever? Uh, and uh, if it has additional the big farm down there, uh, you can re-roll, but you for, you know you can't keep your old roll. And then you must announce whether you're moving a wizard or a tower. Casting a spell at any time, you may cast one spell for your own benefit. The spells cast, uh, the spells available for casting are fa placed face up during setup. To cast a spell, you must spend those potions, then apply the effects to the spell. If your spell causes a wizard den or raven's keep, your turn ends immediately, and then you draw. Spent potion bottles are returned to the game box. So what if you, okay, so you, end of the game. If you have no more empty potion bottles and all of your wizards are in Raven's Keep, you end the game. Finish the round so everyone has the same number of turns. If only one player has all the wizards in Raven's Keep and no potion bottles, they win. If several players, uh, the player with among them with the most full potion bottles wins. If there's a tie, you share victory. Note, you are always allowed to peek into Raven's Keep to see how many wizards are in there. And it doesn't matter which goal you fill first. All right. Then they also have instructions for solo mode, solo with spells. Uh, so that they have cooperative mode. They have other variants, team variant, not so nice variants. And then the direct, like just finishing up with these spells, uh, the description of spells. Advance a wizard plus one. Move any wizard, wiz, wizard, <laughs> wizard one space. Advance a tower. Move any tower two spaces. That's a plus two. Uh, you can't move the, the, you can't use this to move a tower onto Raven's Keep. Swap a tower. Swap the topmost tower and the wizards top them in two spaces. Headwind for a wizard. Move any wizard one space counterclockwise. Oh, so it is good. Headwind tower. Move any tower two spaces counterclockwise. Nudge Raven's Keep. Uh, move Raven's Keep clockwise or counterclockwise to the next empty space or tower top, whichever it encounters in that direction. It does not have to move to a space tower top depicting a raven shield. Piggyback, uh, you can cast a spell only when the current player is moving a wizard from a space uh, to where you also have a wizard, uh, to, from a space. Uh, they must move your wizard along with theirs. Uh, you can cast a spell on yourself when you're moving a wizard uh, to a tower top where you have at least two wizards. Free a wizard. Lift any one tower to free one of your wizards from beneath it. Uh, Placing the wizard on top. Uh, if it, if the top of the stack is Raven's Keep, the wizard enters Raven's Keep. Clever you. If none of your wizards were under the tower, you lifted, you wasted a turn. And on the team variant, you can use this on your teammates too. And that's it for Raven's Keep. Uh, well, what is it? Wandering Towers. Raven's Keep, Wandering Towers. Uh, cannot wait to play this now that I've read the instructions. Don't really know any strategy yet, uh, but it'll be fun. Uh, and I love these tactile games, so thanks, Rusty Biscuit. And don't forget, if you're uh, working on any uh, projects, uh, stage, audio, screen, uh, or, you know, whatever size screen, uh, Rusty Biscuit, uh, Russell's info will be in the show notes. Uh, thanks and good night, everybody. All right, I wanted to thank some of our newest uh, supporters at Sleep With Me Plus, uh, Elena, Stephen, and Tyler. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Cameron, Catherine, and Ruth, thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Benjamin, Miss S, and S. Those are two separate, two S's in a row. Uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Jasper, Georgia, and Emily, thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Matt, Catherine, and Courtney, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kate, Stephen, and Valerie, thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Sandy, Tim, and Emily, thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. 
Natalie, Ryan, and Bethany. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Nedra and Laura. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. And Tiffany, Lori, and Adam. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Uh, thanks everybody who supports the show directly, whether you're a former patron, you support the show now on Sleep With Me Plus or Apple Podcasts. You're part of our referral program. You support the show for free, and you're building up those referrals so you can get ad-free story for story-only episodes. Or you uh, support the sponsors, and you let the sponsors know about it. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're doing any of those things, uh, you really are like uh, the foundation of the podcast. It wouldn't be able to exist without those of you taking action. And that is why I take so much time uh, to, to, to thank people because uh couldn't do it with I wouldn't be able to do it without all you or I could do it twice a month maybe uh without like all the support we get. So thank you so much. Uh and it may this might be uh, Scoots uh with the Tuck You in sponsor asking for support. So thanks, thanks and good night, everybody. All right, everybody, Scoots here talking to you in with this month in uh, Sleep With Me Plus, uh, audio news. Uh, we got a referral program going. If you want to sign up for that, you can always do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I'm going to run through all the content we put out um, this month on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're still waiting to transition on Patreon to Sleep With Me Plus, you got most of this stuff, too. And uh, first, I'm going to start with, uh, like, the the podcast, the bonus uh, podcast uh, on Sleep With Me Plus, and I'm going to go in reverse. So this Saturday, uh, Posty's got a new series that comes out on uh, uh, every other Saturday, just about, and it's called Welcome to Scooterville, and he's re- people are really excited about this. Those are Posty's Super Deluxe episodes. Everybody that supports the show gets those in the bonus feed, and they're really fun, they're really cool and really creative. Uh, some people like listening to him during the day. Some people fall asleep to him. On last Thursday, TNG First Contact Part 2 came out for Boar Friends and Boar Besties. And uh, so it was coverage, two, two, uh, two-part coverage in January and February. Bonus episode covering the Star Trek The Next Generation movie Contact, uh, First Contact, excuse me. Uh, then Saturday. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm scrolling too fast. Sorry. Um, yeah, then Saturday, February 3rd was another Posty Super Deluxe Welcome to Scooterville episode. And, uh, yeah, that was all everything in the bonus content feed. I think we got one more bonus. Set. We got, um, some other stuff coming out. All intro, all night episodes. This is for, uh, Boar Buds and Boar Besties. Uh, it was Deep Value. And, uh, uh, I don't know what the Patreon tiers were anymore. Deep value and ultimate value or something. So we had an all intro episode come out February 8th, uh, and big farm in the sky, PI all night episodes, uh, the six episodes, six or 13. That was part two, six hours and 18 minutes of big farm in the sky, PI. And then, yeah, this week, uh, another all-intro episode will come out. Another all-intro episode came out on uh, February, January 26th or 28th. I can't read that. Okay, and then the story-only feed and the ad-free feed on Sleep With Me Plus, you know, the, the story-only episodes and the um, ad-free full episodes come out on the same day. So if you're a story-only listener, you get those on the same day. Or if you're like, you know, making playlists. Um, so let's see. Those are two separate podcasts on Sleep With Me Plus. Um, but same content. Uh, just uh, the story-only versions have no, well, obviously no ads, no theme music, no uh, jingle music, and no thank yous at the end and no intros. Just the story-only portion of the episode. Okay, so Sunday, 1239, Dessert Week. That was Great British Bake Off, Episode 6. Wednesday was Pup Pup Prodigy, our new series, Multiplex, Episode 1. Uh, February 11th was Wandering Towers, a board game unboxing. There's 1,253 episodes in this feed right now. Um, Sorry, I went off topic there. 
February 7th was uh, Tapestry, which was for Valentine's Day in the public feed. And that was um, a TNG, like a, like a repeat of a TNG episode 560. February 4th, Roaring Twenties, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, uh, episode 5. That's season 10, collection 7. Uh, 1235, January 31st, uh, was, uh, notebooks of the journey into the world of friends. That was a series review. We'll kind of look at the making of that series. January 28th was, uh, romancing the stone tale of the tape uh, in anticipation of Argyle, uh, which you still haven't seen yet. Uh, that was, uh, and then, uh, January 24th was dairy week, great British baking you off to sleep. Season 10, Collection 7, Episode 4. And you can also see kind of we stick at the same kind of rhythm uh, for the most part of uh, a kind of random Trending Tuesday style episode that could be anything. The board game unboxing, tell the tape, uh, personal essay. Then um, we do uh, the written series. So we finished up Journey into World of Friends. Now we're starting Multiplex. Then a TV show recap, uh, with Great, Great British Bake Off, and uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I think that's everything. What I record this week? Great question. This ended up being the week of Bring It On, uh, the cheerleading movie from two thousand, by kind of by accident. Well, not even kind of by accident. Totally by like, uh, I did an episode I thought was going to be about Crayola crayons. Ended up kind of um, trying to imagine if there was a role-playing game based on the film that I'd never seen bring it on, even though I quote the trailer all the time on this podcast. Then I watched over two episodes uh, bring it on on mute uh, and like kind of recorded kind of like a TV recap episode. And, um, those, uh, like uh, with, with some kind of, like, well, I rented the movie. So two out of two, two, one and a half episodes have good quality closed captioning. But then my, uh, rental ran out when I, like, I, I broke up the second episode into two parts. So the final uh, 25 minutes of the show, the movie, I didn't have the best closed captioning, even though it was mostly action-based. It was like the championship. But yeah, I'd never seen, I still never saw it. It's already been brought in. But, uh, I'll, you know, I'll look up the trailer later today just to see. And those will come out, I don't know, right now it's in February. I don't know, those will come out March or April. And those will probably come out as TV recaps because we're still recovering, honestly, from the strike. And I'm still a little, um, you know, all the Great British Bake Off episodes we recorded before the strike. Uh, and so I'm still easing my way back into figuring out what our future of uh, TV recap style episodes is. So we have some interim content right now as I kind of uh, see what I'm comfortable with uh, and is sustainable for the long term of the podcast. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll go from there. And, uh, um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm, uh, glad you're all here. And, uh, if you ever want to support the show directly, trying to put these at the end of the public episodes, um, just as an experiment so you can kind of get a better idea. Still a sleepy voice. But yeah, if you ever want to check out a seven day trial at Sleep With Me Plus, it is a huge way to support all the work that goes into the show and make sure the podcast stays sustainable. So that you can, you can rely on it and a ton of other people can rely on it. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can do that sleep with me podcast.com slash plus, uh, and then let me know what you think, uh, or, or tell me so I can say thank you. Uh, thanks so much and good night.